Well, hello there again. It's David Wetton. I've been uh, a bit about offline for a fair bit, but back in business, doing some NHL player mapping using Microsoft Excel, Power Query, and Power Map. Of course, data is coming from the hockey database, and I'm going to be doing Boston Bruins just because somebody in Boston asked me. So just to get started, key steps in business intelligence, obviously. Discovery, got to get the data, analyze it, and then got to visualize it. So we're kind of just doing one and three mostly here. But firstly, just to remind you about the tools, discovery. Of course, that's how we, what we use Power Query for, and it's absolutely the most amazing tool. Doing any analysis, um, that's obviously where you bring in your pivot tables or Power Pivot if you were to need that, but we don't need it today. Thirdly, visualization. Obviously, you want the, the information to be displayed properly and communicating it. In this case, Power View, Power Map is what we're going to use. And the last two include, for obvious reasons, inform and distribute, because i got to fill out the whole word here. Yes, my David method, discover, analyze, visualize, inform, and distribute. Now, in order to do any project, we need to get some data. So Hockey Season went over to the Hockey Database site, and this is where I grabbed some information. In this case, the names and birth dates of everyone who's ever played for the Boston Bruins. So the objective of the exercise is to create a process to go and discover the data using Power Query, which would create an automatic extract, get it over into Excel, probably have to do a little bit of cleaning up, get it into a worksheet, uh, and then pop out a map in Excel in 3D Power Map. And just as a quick peek for those who don't know what uh, Power Map can do, of course, it's that uh, three-dimensional mapping tool that uses Excel. Um, so here it is for the product that we'll be mapping. So this is mapping the player birthplace by the positions. So that's the target objective to create this product from Excel using Power Query. Like most things in Excel, of course, we start with an Excel table. And since we're going to be using Power Query, we'll um, go to the Power Query tab. You'll need to have that uh, activated. In this case, I've already got a thing here, but uh, what I'll do is I'll go to a blank page and do it from scratch. There we go, Power Query. We're going to take this from the web. Now, this is the web address that corresponds to the site where the data is located. In this case, it's right here. This information over here, um, I right click on that, copy link address. That's all I need. From there on, I can just get rid of the website. I'll never need that again because everything is going to be done in here. And I'm going to press OK. And what that does, it creates a link. As you can see, it's now writing down the various steps it's going to do in Power Query. And it's now, there's two items there, but that looks to me like the item I want. So I'm going to import that. Just double click. And basically what that does is now it's, as you can see over here, it's got the source and it's done a correction on a type, but I trust it to do that. And here we have the table now linked permanently to the database. That's the key. So not wanting to spend too much time making this a Power Query lesson, what I've done is create the link. As you can see down the side here, I had to make a couple of changes. I mean, first of all, I got rid of a column. I didn't need it. Um, no reason to keep it. The other thing I found that when it comes to mapping, and this is something to pay attention to, each mapping tool has its own quirkies. And in this case, the system Power Map wasn't as happy with some of these provincial um, abbreviations. For example, ALTA was causing it some grief. So what I did here at the extracts phase was I just went in, changed the the trans replace values. Oh, cancel. But it's just up here. You can see here, replace ATLA with the actual name Alberta and so on. I just did that. I did that a couple of times back and forth just to kind of clean up some anomalies. It's not perfect, but it, you know, at least you only have to do this once if you were doing this over and over again. Well, anyways, once you've got the data ready, you just close it and carry on, which brings you back to the table that looks pretty much like an average um, 
Excel worksheet, which is fine. And now we're going to do Power Query, which is an add-in for 2013 or 365. You'll find it up here under the Insert I have a number of items here. There's Power View. Here's Power Map. Now, in this case, it's advising me I'd already created one, so that's fine. But we can also do a new tour. So it starts with a blank map. There are some basic tools on the toolbar, which we'll cover in a minute. But essentially, the first step on any mapping exercise is you've got to give it some places. It's got to have locations. Now, it can do various things, last longs, postal codes, zip codes, street addresses. But in this case, we have some information called birthplace. And that is a city location, to the best of our knowledge. And of course, you'll see it does its best to try and map things where they belong. That's Anchorage, San Jose. So did a pretty good job. That's step one. And then, of course, you want to map something, like what kind of data did you want to map. The other thing you'll see in Power Map is it's going to tell you how well it did this. What it's saying here is it got 87% mapping confidence. So there's some names in there that are beyond its capacity to map. Um, if you check it out, you'll usually find the reason why. If the number is low, you might want to fix your data up. If it's high enough um, for this purpose, that's good enough for me. So now we're going to drop a few things in. For example, we wanted to say how many, uh, let's do points by position. So it's just literally drag and drop. Very simple. Power Map doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. There's no real data mining capabilities here. It's really just about visualizing the data. Of course, you do get all kinds of uh, depth to the data, but that's all there really is to it. And like I said, there's a couple of very simple tools you can use. Like I say, what makes this tool very simple to use is the fact that there isn't a lot you can do with it. But what you can do, you can do uh, quite well and quite easily. I personally like round shapes, just my personal preference. Yeah, that looks kind of nicer. There's basically very few other things you can do. You have some themes. Of course, you can go from um, real satellite photography. And of course, you can get right in there. But of course, it doesn't help too much if your data is worldwide. You do need to kind of step back a bit to understand it. Yes, you can add 2D charts based on that data. In this case, it probably isn't going to make any sense. So get rid of it. Um, you can certainly flatten the map. You know, get your big hammer out. If you don't like the world being flat, round, you can make it flat or back. Actually, I find a lot of this stuff is just eye candy and fun, but still, that can help people look at your data. That's not a bad thing. Now, once you finish this process, you can you um, have the option of almost in a way like PowerPoint. You can create um, a video with from slides. So if you go to the tour editor, so this is what it's going to do here, and I'll just get rid of these because they're just, um, is you can start your, essentially your world tour if you like. Um, go to here, add a scene. So what it's going to do is it's going to string these together um, into a video presentation if you like. So you can tour, you can go in, you can move around, you can scroll, you can keep adding scenes. But what you're basically doing, it's almost like an, an old-fashioned movie, moving pictures show. You can map places. It will then transition between them. You can add a picture here. And go right down in. It's really up to you to decide how you want to do your show. There are all kinds of controls related to each slide. For example, how long each scene will last, um, how, how long the transition will last, and the effect, whether you want to circle around or I'm never sure what dolly means. But anyways, figure eight, fly over, rotate the globe, whatever. So again, you make up your kind of visual show in whatever way you want. You can always come back here and change it. Then you string the slides together, and you can just play the tour in this case. 
perhaps not a finalized product and I should probably have cut down the transition time to speed things up but you get the idea it goes from point to point where you created the slides um, following whatever instructions you gave it in terms of transitions and um, effect and will carry on for as long as uh, you have slides it'll go from start to finish you can add little um, annotation notes in your screen as well but again this is like I say this tool isn't like a data analysis tool it's a data visualization and it only makes sense to use it where you have data that you could visualize or generally speaking just where it's interesting would you want to watch this information in a visual format or is it better in a table or chart really it's up to you to, to kind of work with your data the only suggestion I have is if you're working with visualization data then make sure your visuals are actually um, clear uh, that people can understand them sometimes these colors can get pretty funky um, very hard to read you can change the size and shapes of the columns again if the columns are all bumping into each other you can't really make much sense of them so again make your choices color palettes are available as are the uh, do you want real time real maps you can change the themes into something really yeah I mean I'm not sure what that one's supposed to do but it's pretty funky does seem to have all the parks located on it though so if you really want to map yourself against the parks or the forests it uh, seems to be accurate actually but it seems to be hard on the eyes too so uh, use that one carefully yes of course you can add map labels again you decide whether that's actually adding value or just detracting from your presentation as you get further in you get more and more details of those maps and those labels so beware of that actually it's a very interesting tool if you want to go to explore geography so anyways that's it for uh, data mapping with Excel Power Query Power Map start to finish and hope you enjoyed it